Connor Avis. And for Gonzaga, which comes in at 8 and 2, it's the senior Silas Melson, Josh Perkins, Norvell, the upstart redshirt freshman, the senior Jonathan Williams, and the do everything Killian Tilly. Those are your starting lineups brought to you by Numerica. So, about ready to go here is Gonzaga will be wearing the home whites against the black and green of North Dakota, which comes in at four and six on the season, but losers of three in a row. Guys, a little different atmosphere, but we'll adapt just like the crowd is as well. We're underway. Bulldogs moving left to right on your TV screen. We'll control the ball with Josh Perkins running things. Be very interesting to see what Norvell does early on. Here's Tilly with the lob inside. This is where Gonzaga can take advantage. It's Williams, though, comes up short on the bunny. So it's the Fighting Hawks now settling in on offense, their first possession. You can see a North Dakota team that will really space the floor, pick and rolls in a number of different ways. They really want to play fast. Haven't been able to do that this year because they've turned it over and haven't shot it great to start the year. A little bit of nerves there, perhaps, for the junior out of Edmond, Oklahoma, Connor Avance, who lost the ball, went out of bounds, but lost last touch by Gonzaga along the end line. So here's Crandall to end back. Eight on the shot clock. It's Crandall. Pulls up for three, off the mark. And here's Perkins pushing the tempo. Trailer here for J3. And off to Nelson. The defensive standout who will be matching up with Crandall for much of this one. Tilly with the baseline drive and the floater to go. And he's got to look to do that. He's got that jump shot, but he's so quick for a guy his size. He has to force Jones to have to guard the bounce, but he can't settle for the jump shots. That's a good look. A little push, and it's going to be a call against Dale Jones. Is Perkins might have taken one across the jaw, maybe shades of MSG a couple years ago. <laughs> Hope not. That's Sam. exactly on. right. For Josh's sake, as well as this GU ball club, a little thin at the point guard position. It was a scare the other night at UW when Josh checked out for a short bit and he had a, his shoulder looked at. You know, Steph Curry wears the mouth guard kind of as a, uh, you know, auxiliary piece, kind of decoration. When Josh wears it, he looks like Muhammad Ali, ready to go 12 rounds. <laughs> Nelson with the mid range jumper, kept alive by Norvell, and it's Tilly the finish. So often the offensive rebound, those extra possessions, it, it, it's not the guy who scores it that creates that opportunity. It's the guy flying in, just getting a hand on the ball as Norvell comes up with another loose ball. And he's going to try to finish himself. He's fouled in the lane. So Gonzaga trying to turn defense into offense, something that they're trying to get going here. Well, you see here Gonzaga. Norvell, Norvell on the baseline just gets his hand on the ball, Sam. Doesn't end up with the ball or the two points, but he creates the opportunity for Killian on the offensive class. You don't get credit for that in the stat sheet, but the coaches do track that. And Perkins with a good look. And Gonzaga out to a six nothing lead. It was Walter on the foul, his first. Seals being defended here by Tilly, who was smothering him on the defensive end. Stewart now driving, gets some help defensively. Tilly got a hand on it. Here's Norvell. Norvell in transition, lost the ball, trying to feed it to Williams. Now Gonzaga backpedaling on defense. Gonzaga has scored the first six points of this contest. Twelve on the shot clock, little pull-up jumper, well off the mark for Marlon Stewart. That's not a good look. Oh, difficult step back over the top of Killian Tilly with a great defense there. Norvell with a little heat check there that's gone over the last couple of weeks. He was short on the three-point attempt. Now here's Seals on the other way trying to break down Silas Melson. And another fall-away jumper, that one off the mark as well. You've seen an active Norvell. We talked about it earlier on the last miss. He's averaged over 20 a game in the last four games, but when he can do the other things, get extra possessions, get on the offensive and defensive glass, that's a good sign for Gonzaga because there was a lot of question marks if he could do those little things. A long rebound by Tilly extended that possession as it dribbles out of bounds. We'll have a first substitutions now. 
And a sloppy game to start here, Sam. Both teams with three turnovers apiece. And if you're Gonzaga, just you know, look to make some simple plays, Dan. It looks like they're trying to thread the needle, make the spectacular play. And there's the head coach, Brian Jones, 170 wins at the helm. This is his 12th season. Says he doesn't know Mark Few personally, but has admired him from afar. I don't know if maybe that admiration might be even strengthened after this contest, the way it's going early. And Seals on the drive and fouled Gonzaga's first foul. It took 20 fouls in North Dakota's last contest before they finally got to go to the free throw line. 20 fouls called on the opponent before they finally picked up their first. I should say free throws, excuse me, as Norvell steps out of the ball game for the first time. And in comes Corey Kispert. Remember, Kispert started the season in that starting lineup and had the ankle injury and still about about 70%, according to Brian Michelson. There's Jones breaking the scoreless drought. Dale Jones coming off the bench, the Iowa graduate transfer. J3 on the other end, off the nice entry. Pass left hand, hook, in and out, no good. So the deficit cut in half thanks to the Dale Jones three. Totaled 33 points in his two years at Iowa. Scored 31 points in the span of three games when he came over to play for North Dakota in the Rainbow Classic. So well, you can see why it's been a great step for him. You can see why he got the attention of Iowa as Jones just slips this ball screen and gets the easy dunk. But he's a kid who's got some good ball skills. Dan can shoot it out the three. Doesn't shoot it at a high clip, but he's got the ability to stretch the floor and some size to compete around the rim. Jones is. Accounted for all five points by North Dakota so far. The Fighting Hawks in a 5-0 run to close within one. Bojo's Colorado style pizza. It's where the locals go. Try our legendary mountain pie. Dip your homemade crust in Colorado honey and sample Colorado beers. Design your own pizza and order it gluten free. Serving the Rocky Mountain appetite for over 40 years. Points in the opener. Marlon Stewart, kind of a slow start to the season, held at 26 points in the first three games, but averaging just a tick under 16 over the last seven games. So those are your keys to the game. Brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. And here's Silas. Silas with a fearless drive for two, and the Bulldogs are up by three. Attacks that poor closeout, and then the ability to finish through contact. Avance was a little late. Billy Brown is into the lineup. Number three, sophomore out of Spirit Lake, Iowa. And he has the ball here, defended by Kisper. Gonzaga back to the starting lineup that it had on opening night. Little runner in the lane, no good. Loose ball. Last touch by North Dakota. Well, take a look at Silas. Does it settle for a long jump shot? That's just a strong take. Avance looks to be there, but not enough contact for the official. The no call, still the tough finish. For Silas, and we talk about it fairly regularly, Dan, but with both Silas and Josh, there's a little bit of balance to their game. They're both uh, so effective from behind the three-point line. They need to balance things out a bit at times. Looks like Jonathan Williams is going to have to sit out for a breather. He he might have some blood or cut on him, so he's going to come out. And Jakob Larson comes in for the first time. It's been hard to get him on the floor, but when he has been on the floor, he's been magnificent. He's, he's had some stretches in this early season where he's looked really good. There's Jakob handing off to Silas Nelson between the legs. Puts up a jumper. No good. Tilly with a follow, but that draws iron as well. Jones now in transition. They have gotten away with the travel there on the catch and collect. Seals trying to break down Larson, who gets help from Tilly. Kick back out to the wing. That's Crandall, who was fouled on the shot. It's on Melson, his first. Well, that is a cardinal sin when you're closing out against a shooter and to foul the jump shooter behind the three-point line. Silas Melson, a rare mistake on the defensive end to put Crandall at the line for three. A lot of times shooters, all they need is one look to go down, whether it's a free throw, whether it's an easy layup in transition. Crandall misses the first, it might get him going. 76% free throw shooter on the season, the junior out of Minneapolis. Our officials, Mark Cook, Justin Shamian, and Travis Schatzman. My goodness, two misses. And now the third. Gonzaga after that little spell. Three of five and one of six. 
A little streaky for a team that has been hovering around 50% shooting for much of the season. Number two in field goal shooting in the country. Here's Tilly. Killian with the right hand. A little floater no good. Loose ball. Silas could not corral it. And it's gathered by the Fighting Hawks. Good defensive possession for North Dakota. Switching. Nice moves that. by Back Seals. Seals. That's a big time post move. Uh, from your off guard. Holy cow. Nice left handed finish. Seals Big Sky Conference Reserve of the Year last season. Also leads the team in blocks with six on the season. Rui Hachimura getting ready to sub in for Gonzaga. Here's Larson defending. He picks up his first foul. We see here Seals just backs down Perkins, and that is tremendous footwork. Gets it up high off the glass. Larson can't affect it. And it's interesting, Dan, early on we've seen North Dakota, they often look to post up their backcourt with both Jones and Walter really being more face-up bigs. It's almost, it, they almost invert their offense. It forces Gonzaga's backcourt to have to defend a low block. Well, Coach Brian Jones wants to keep it simple on the defensive end, and if you give it great effort, he's going to give you freedom on the offensive end. We saw Hachimura bringing the ball up. And it's Larson right hand still going after like they're playing volleyball out there. Until finally it ends up in the hands of North Dakota. 8-8 eight, eight ball game. And Larson gets the rebound. North Dakota unable to take its first lead right there. A little, wow, what a pass. A dime by Perkins, the no look, and Rui the finish. And that's what I think Josh can do more of is in transition probe. Just try to get right. the defense off balance. That time kept his dribble in the middle of the floor and was able to find Hachimura. Well, the key there is he, he kept his dribble alive. He, he didn't pick up. Floor. He let the, uh, the play develop a little bit longer. Seals. A little leaner. Seals That'll go. Boy, oh boy. Back and forth we go. Showed some versatility in the early going. The pull up jumper there. He post up on the block a minute ago. He saw Silas pick up the dribble there. Here's Josh Perkins. A skip pass into the corner. This is Kispert. Boy, is there a place on the floor this guy cannot knock down a shot. Well, you like that look. The look at that jump shot. He caught it on balance, a bit of a tight window, still able to elevate on balance and knock down the three point shot. It takes a while to come back from the high ankle sprain. Perkins going after the ball, a little no look. Seals knocks it down to the lane. And it's a one point ball game, 13 to 12. You know, Seals only, you know, 0 of 7 from, on the year from behind the arc. This is what he does, the short. Corner catches as Kispert misses the little bunny on the baseline. Seals is giving Gonzaga all kinds of fits here to start the game. Avance out rebounding Larson there. There's a reverse lay-in that will go for Cortez Seals. North Dakota has taken its first lead of the contest. Seals getting it done. Pushing it in transition right there. Just poor communication ability to get back and create a wall and stop the ball handler. Aggressive defense there. We're going to take the timeout, 14 to 13. North Dakota has a lead. Kispert shining early on, showing the range off a nice pass by Perkins. But the Bulldogs find themselves on upset alert. They're down by one early. First look of the night at Jeremy Jones, who comes in the rotation for Gonzaga. Boy, Gonzaga has done a good job of limiting Crandall and Stewart, but it's it's been the complimentary player Seals in this case as there's a left-hand hook by Williams. Gonzaga had a plan coming out of that timeout. Why pin down to Norvell and go straight to a drop to Williams on the block. Good execution, patience. And interesting, no double from North Dakota. We saw that double come early here in the first half. Good recognition from Williams just to go to work. And now almost a turnover. Crandall corrals it. Will bounce pass. Aaron out of bounds. Gonzaga basketball. We also have our first look at Garrett Franken, who comes into the contest. Brian Jones with North Dakota going up against Gonzaga. First time that we've seen that matchup since 1972. Both teams looking to make up for lost time. Here's Perkins. 
Lost the ball. Loose ball. Out of bounds remains Gonzaga basketball. Well, with Perkins, are we going to see the Josh Perkins that we saw on opening night where he was hunting for a shot? It's been Norvell has been, uh, of course, very assertive offensively. Uh, he hasn't given that that up to him in, in many ways. But but where do we see Josh well, in the flow? I think it's just a matter of picking and choosing your spots. I mean, there's going to be nights where Perkins gets a lot of looks. There's going to be other nights where teams focus in on him and try to take things away. And when that has happened, other guys have stepped up. We've talked about Norvell has been very good the last four games or so. With seven on the shot clock, Williams gets it out. Pope loose. Perkins gathers it with three on the clock. Almost knocked it down and Norvell the rebound. Hustle play leads to a Perkins three. No good. Last touch by Norvell out of bounds. But what a sequence. Uh, Perkins put in a difficult position. The shot clock winding down, having to shoot the 30-footer. But there's no hesitation. <laughs> there can't be with the shot yeah, clock winding down there. On the second possession one, I really like that look there by Josh Perkins. When you're a knockdown shooter from the three-point line and you've got a wide-open look after an extra possession, you've got to let it go. Yeah, the best time to get that look is Absolutely. typically off the offensive rebound. I mean, yeah, when you're shooting just under 52% from three, I suspect you've got the green light. Be hunting shots on every opportunity. Almost had his 34th three-point make of the season. He's in the top 25 in the country in three-pointers made this season. Tilly defending and picks it up after the Jones turnover. Gonzaga trying to get this efficient offense on track right now. They missed 11 of their last 15 from the floor. Entry pass denied. They try to get it inside to Tilly. Jones tries to chase it down out of bounds. Uh, just error after error on the offensive end by both teams on that little stretch. Collectively now, we're at 10 turnovers a little over 10 minutes into the game. And those guys just trying to make spectacular plays. I mean, Josh, it's a good read, but it's such a tight window. Just move the ball along. Let your offense do a little bit more work. No good on the three by Norvell. Tilly could not get the rebound. One point ball game. GU up by one. 15 to 14. Coming out that win at the University of Washington in Seattle. Well, remember, UW come off that win in Kansas City. In a quote unquote neutral site against that number two Kansas. That UW win over Kansas was the biggest upset up till now for the college basketball season if you look at the analytics. Jones picks up the foul, his first. And then maybe taking some of the luster off that uh, win by UW was Arizona State, then going to Lawrence and beating Kansas a well, couple days know, later. I, you know, I, I've seen Bill Self's stated this is not. You know, he, he wishes this team, this, co this collection of players, had some more toughness. When you look at what they have, they don't have great size to the group. Kansas does. It's just not the same type of Kansas team that we've seen. Oh, we're talking about upsets uh, last week. How about just today alone in the top 25? Wichita State goes down. Oklahoma, I really like that young guard, Trey Young. He is absolutely fun to watch. But the one that's interesting or has a tie into this game is Florida. Yeah, just apart. slid this last two weeks or so. Third loss in the last two weeks. They looked top five material after beating Gonzaga at the PK-80. K-3 kicks out to... Norvell with eight and a half minutes to play. Still a close contest. And now a charge is called against G3. Boy, Avance took a shot down low. And that's a scouting charge. In other words, he took the scouting report. He understands on these types of catches. Jonathan prefers to attack quickly on the baseline. He anticipated it perfectly. Text paid book. for it. <laughs> Boy, he did. But, that, but I think he's still catching his wind on that one. That's a heady play. Well, folks, we've seen a total of three, 13 makes from the field so far and 11 turnovers. Seals pulls the trigger on that jumper over Jones. Seals continues his impressive play. Ten points now on the night, five and six from the field. His mid-range game is nice, to say the least. First signs of life from this Gonzaga crowd. And cannot prompt a three. 
by Norvell. Well, Seals is trying to seal the deal. Here's Spokane, where Gonzaga has missed its last five from the floor. North Dakota leads by three. Woo, that was close. And Trick Bernstein. Uh, they look like the team that maybe we, we saw go to the tourney a year ago. Well, and more importantly, they lost their heart and soul, their leadership in Quentin Hooker. Crandall has done an impressive job based upon what Brian Jones is asking him to do early in the season. But you're right, it's hard to replace guys. Bulldogs trailing by three. Here's Killian Tilly with the layup. Back to a one-point contest. Good find there by Norvell. Yeah, that was a tight window. He delivered it. Right on the money. Tilly now with six points in ten minutes on the floor to go with three rebounds. We've not heard Crandall's name called a whole lot so far, but the idea for him is distribute early. That rims out no good. Kispert with the rebound, but it, let the game come to him. Well, Crandall's a guy who can score. Averages about 17 a game on the season. Had 41 in the season. Over five games, 20 or more. But you're right. He's asked to get guys involved early and then pick and choose his spots. Mm, wow. Williams got the rebound and then is whistled for the travel as they were trying to yank the ball away from him. Like a loose ball situation. Neither guy seemed to have control. A tough whistle for GU. But you like the acti activity level both from Tilly and Williams here in the first half on the offensive glass. Let's see what J3 does here off the steal, and he flushes it home. No doubt about that one. Put your hand on the ball, create the turnover, push it. Transition with the finish. I think they just poked the angry bear. <laughs> Jones for three on the other end. That's a nice answer for North Dakota. The second what? three of the night. He is going to be a load in the big sky. The Iowa transfer. Nice step out game. Can score it on the block a little bit. Kisper works it over to Norvell. Norvell tried to drop back out. Lost it to Crandall. Crandall in transition. Can't get the finish on the lay-in. We'll see how explosive he is, though, in transition. Contested shot. Then travel first, Sam. Here's a look at Jonathan Williams. Hey, he earned it. The best way to create easy offense is climb up defensively and create turnovers. Jonathan Williams doing just that. Steel turning it into buckets. One thing Brian Jones loves about this team from afar, looking at tape and watching Gonzaga, is the fact that these own we've seen some, him have some success uh, where he can find that open man when he gets the ability to operate in that high post. A very, very skilled front court for GU. Seven turnovers now for North Dakota, but eight for Gonzaga, which has actually had four turnovers over its last eight possessions. That is not a good rate. No, but North Dakota really makes things difficult and uncomfortable for you. Force almost 15 and a half turnovers a game on the year. It seals, continues to operate in that mid-range. Does a really good job of keeping guys off balance and then creating space to step back. He's got 12 now, 6 of 7. Is and now another turns turnover. It over. Four-point lead, largest of the game for North Dakota. Jones, a trailer three. Off the mark, Norvell the rebound. Boy, oh boy. This is where Gonzaga may miss Nigel Williams Gossam. His leadership, his ability to just, hey, pull the ball back out. Let's get in a good offensive set this time down the floor. There's this crowd with signs of life as well. Now Tilly picks up the loose ball. Norvell for three. Got it. One point game. 45 to play before halftime. Uh, North Dakota's North Dakota at halftime. You've got to be thrilled with what's taking place so far, but the offensive rebounds have killed you. Eight offensive rebounds for Gonzaga, and they've done an excellent job of taking advantage of those second chance opportunities. Boy, Stewart going right at Killian. And Tilly's going to pick up the foul. Well, here, you know, 50 50 play till he comes up with it. You've got four North Dakota players around one GU guy. He comes up with it again. The three point shot off the offensive rebound. Then we see the foul. That's a good call from the whistle. Got him up top just enough to send Stewart to the line. Stewart rattles that one home. 
72% free throw shooter on the season. Avans comes back in for North Dakota. Rui Hachimura and Jakob Larson come in for GU as Williams comes out for a breather. Star Stewart is an interesting player from North Dakota. Started his career at Creighton, transferred to North Dakota. Coach Brian Jones has high hopes for him in his career. Well, you said it early, Sam. He's been tremendous the last seven games, averaging about 16. He also does a nice job defensively, nearly two steals per game. So that's a pretty dynamic backcourt with Stewart and Crandall. Yeah, 20 points against Nebraska. Oh, Gonzaga, you've seen the size that GU has had against this team, but it, it's been the turnovers that have been the biggest problem. As now Tilly picks up yet another foul. Crandall just climbing up in to Gonzaga's perimeter players and then quick jump out on the switch with Tilly. Gets the steal, push in transition. Has the presence of mind to draw contact himself to the line. It's a crap. That's a veteran move right Crafty. there. Slow down just enough to let the defender catch up. Break that contact is push the down bonus. the first free throw. Yeah, and now one and bonus, one. one and one. And don't don't think for a moment Crandall doesn't know that. No, when you're a scorer, you know the second you're in the bonus, any chance you have to get fouled, you get free throw opportunities. He hasn't been able to knock him down this evening. Tilly finds a seat on the bench with two fouls. J3 left open for three. Larson the rebound and the putback. And that's the difference he brings off the bench. Well, Avance is trying to box him out. I mean, that's 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six against nearly 7 foot. Probably could have gotten the whistle uh, if you're North Dakota State there. Or North Dakota, rather, on the over the back. But you just see the disparity in size over uh, the course of an entire game. It just starts to wear you down. Yeah, Avance went up against a 7 footer when North Dakota took on Utah Valley. But with all due respect to Utah Valley, their 7 footer is not the Danish 6 foot 11 guy we see here on the floor. 26-24, North Dakota has the lead, folks, on a day that we've already seen four top 25s go down. Playing basketball, so I really just, it's my outlet. Well, my athletic my outlet is Little, is little skating. doubles, skate, yeah, skating, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know about that. My daughters are all three ice skaters, so I get to a lot of ice <laughs> rinks around the Pacific Northwest, but I haven't been to that one yet. Well, it's been the crowd favorite in Spokane Interesting look here. a couple weeks ago. Interesting look here, Sam. First time Gonzaga's fallen back into a 2-3 zone. Let's see how North Dakota attacks it. Well, Seals has been the go-to guy, and he had it. He couldn't get away, get it away quick enough as he kicks it back out again. Three-point attempt, no good uh, from Dale Jones. You like the look if you're North Dakota. Uh, they do a nice job of handling that first look at the zone. Got the ball up to, at the high post with Seals and well, Larson loves this matchup. Left hand hook, no good. Loose ball. And back to North Dakota. Interesting stat so far tonight is Gonzaga hasn't attempted a single free throw. I mean, Gonzaga is known for punishing teams by getting the lead free throw line time and time again as Avance has a nice up and under finish. Holding his shoulder as he runs back down the floor. Well, it's been interesting. North Dakota, they've done an excellent job of defending, you know, with they've been physical on that end of the floor, but they've only committed five fouls. I mean, you get taught, you know, that's that's what you want to do. Defend without fouling. They put on a clinic in that regard here in the first half. Another turnover. Gonzaga's 11th of the first half. I mean, they are obviously a smaller team in right. the front line and Keenan Walter, the sophomore from Vancouver, has three of their five fouls, and he is their tallest player. Seals on the drive, lost it. Perkins and Silas scrambling for the ball. Alternating possession goes to the Fighting Hawks. Tell you what, this it reminds me of the start Gonzaga had in the season opener where turnovers were the problem. Yeah, look, I mean, look, quite frankly, they've been lethargic here in the first half. It's understandable to some degree. You're coming off finals. You know, this is the first true game with you know, a game without uh, a true student section, and they've been flat. And, you know, tip, the, tip your hat to North Dakota. They've come out ready to play. Uh, Crandall with three on the shot clock. He took the bait from the, from the crowd and got it to go. That's showing you a little bit of his skill set right there. Critical here. Critical 140 for North Dakota. Got a six-point cushion. 
Can you maintain that lead or at least keep it tied going into half? You don't want to give up a little spurt here. Hachimura off the lob and in for two. Love it. Credit to Jakob Larson there on that high low. For as young as he is, the fact he's essentially hadn't played in a year and a half before this season given his injury, he has got a tremendous feel. Uh, and you, you see he's just scratching the surface, but he can really pass the ball. Just over a minute to play in a four-point ball game for in favor of North Dakota. Seals another jumper. That one is good. Great Best offense. place to beat that zone is right in the high post. Seals has done a lot of his damage in that mid-range area that time. Finds it against the zone. For all the work they did prior to that, just swinging the ball, forcing yeah. that GU zone to have to shift. And now Williams gets that left-hand hook to go. This coming after the shot by Seals. He is now 7 of 8 is Seals for 14 points. Leads all scorers. Gonzaga without a single player in double figures so far. And now it's Stewart over to Rui and Larson. Wow, tough finish. Takes it off the list. <laughs> These guys know how to finish around the rim as Perkins gets the quick time out here with a little less than 17 seconds here in the first half. Now at AlaskaAir.com. Final 16 seconds for Gonzaga. Hasn't been sweet so far. The Bulldogs trailing by six. Largest deficit of the ball game for GU. Here's Melson, mid-range jumper, got it with four on the clock, and now stolen by Norvell, swatted away, and that'll do it. But finally, maybe that kickstart Gonzaga has been searching for all night long. They trail by... Thank you. And here we go for the second half. Silas Melson, Josh Perkins, Killian Tilly, Zach Norvell, Jonathan Williams, just as we started this ball game. Something needs to jumpstart this Gonzaga offense, and it's not going to be the crowd. If they're waiting for the crowd to turn things around, they might keep waiting. They've got to find this within themselves. You got to find it within your own huddle, your, your own huddle, your own locker room. You got to manufacture that energy. To your point, Sam Jones for three. He was wide open, knocks it down. Dale Jones, just the start. That well, North exactly, the first four minutes are critical for North Dakota. But I love the fact Seals gave up the wide open three. That's he, he knows who he is offensively. Makes that extra pass. Jones is the three point shooter of the two. Jones knocks down his third. Tilly, how did that not go in? Jones had that three, but you mentioned Cortez passing up that three point opportunity where he's wide open. He's over seven on the yeah, year. He, but he doesn't take him unless he ha he, he understands who he is. A mid-range guy. He's good off the bounce. Could finish at the rim. Largest lead of the contest turns into nine now. 39 to 30 here in Spokane. Stewart just snaking off that pick and roll. Keeping Norvell on his back to the crafty finish. We're seeing an experienced North Dakota ball club. It's not backing down from the challenge. Third time we've seen the crowd rise to the occasion. Can Gonzaga follow suit? Williams is fouled. Well, here Seals, wide open, gives it up. Quick decision. Jones knocks it down. Not a high percentage guy, but tonight three of six. And here's Stewart. This is just a crafty veteran pick and roll play. Does it? He sees there's no big helping him, helping out Norvell on the drive, and he's. So crafty at finishing it. He extends himself. He's undersized. He really finishes at the highest point he can and gets the ball high up the glass. There's no third coat of guards. They're, they're strong. They're physical on both ends, both offensively and, look, and defensively. A North Dakota team that went to the tournament last year and lost three starters. But Stewart is a Division I kid, transferred from Creighton. Jones, Division I kid, transferred from Iowa. So they've got talent on this team. And obviously, they've got a tremendous player at the point guard position in Crandall. Williams going one for two from the line on that trip. Gonzaga's first visit to the charity stripe tonight. Did not go to the line a single time in the first half. With five on the shot clock, baseline jumper by Crandall is good. Ten-point North Dakota lead. As soon as Crandall saw Tilly on him, his eyes lit up. Put him on skates and pull up jump shot. Norvell bounce pass and Williams the flush. 
And that's what I think Zach could do more of, is make the passing play coming out of pick and rolls. He's a great shooter, great scorer, but his vision and his ability to pass Stewart up top, off the glass, too easy. Back-to-back uh, -back pick and rolls. That's a high-level finish right there. Right-handed finish off the right leg, one-handed. Impressive. Stewart picks up the foul. Now Gonzaga's going to have a decision to, about how to guard that pick and roll. Are they going to hard hedge a little more, maybe trap, even switch? Because with this lineup with Williams and Tilly, they can switch. And with Stewart, he's shooting sub 30% from three, sub 27% from three. You know, go under. You change it up, force him to knock down a jump shot. Oh, a hard landing for Tilly. You could hear it from the top row here inside the kennel. That was not a good looking fall. He's slow to even roll over. Got himself airborne. Avance doing a good job stepping in front taking that charge mm. hopefully Tilly's all right because that was a nasty fall another look this is good play Avance is there in time outside that half circle there's no way for Tilly to brace his fall lands right on his low back but that's the evolution and growth in his game that at, at times you see so many positives and then at times there's some head scratches oh. he jumped then turned sideways in the air trying to create contact. He had a nice little eight-foot push floater, which is in his repertoire. We talk about adding insult to injury after he leaves. It's a charge, so he's on the bench, and here's a three. That ends a streak of seven straight makes for the Fighting Hawks on offense. Bulldogs down by ten. Melson for three off the back iron. GU now 2 of 11 from beyond the arc, 18%. Coming into tonight, 38% on the year. Have really struggled here on their home floor. Seals drawing a lot of attention, kicks it over to Stewart. Stewart closed out baseline, get it back out. 10 on the shot clock. Seals be defended by Williams. Three on the shot clock. Left hand contested. Shot goes over J3. That's good defense. That's just yes. better offense. Williams moved his feet. Did a nice job of challenging that tough shot from Seals. But when you've got it going, you've got it going. And tonight, Seals machine, you, you kind of having some bad flashbacks of what, what's happened before on Gonzaga's home floor. That just reminds me of a game maybe six or seven years ago, Portland State first game. Uh, after a tough game as Perkins knocks down the jump shot. We've got no students who are here. Portland State was a good team. It just come off an NCAA tournament appearance. And Gonzaga that night was just flat for 40 minutes. And Portland State played a tremendous game. And it's, this has that same type of feel. Lattice, we've heard the crowd here tonight. With the students away on break, it's up to the big grown-ups to take over. Crandall the feed. Loose ball. And Gonzaga creates a turnover. Norvell ahead to Perkins. Three is good! And there's the crowd. Josh Perkins stepped up these last two possessions. First off the pick and roll, and then that three in transition. Really getting this crowd into it now. Seven point ball game. Gonzaga on the short end of that seven point differential. With 15 minutes and change to play. Oh, and now a fouler is called on Perkins. Thought we might have seen a travel. Bulldogs lead by 7, 45 to 38. Defense turning to offense and cranking up the intensity in the kettle. Long live commitment with a legendary Hemi engine and the powerful heavy duty with best. 297, your answer coming up later in the broadcast. Well, the crowd has answered the call. Now it's Gonzaga's turn to keep them going. Down by seven. Avance handing off to Crandall, who is very quiet in the first half. Three on the shot clock. Two. Right hand shot, no go. A big stop for the Bulldogs. 
And now it's Norvell to J3, who never really had a handle on that one. Well, just poor angles yeah, on the post-entry pass there. It's just, it, it's coming in so hot. Just make the simple play, kick it over to Melson on the wing, and let him deliver the ball inside to Williams. Here's Stewart now giving up to Seals. Seals with that big 14-point first half. Six on the shot clock, pulls up from the... Elbow and no good. So back-to-back -back stops by the Bulldogs. Here after the timeout, Perkins, no good on the three. Norvell can't get the loose ball. Hung around there forever, playing pinball in the lane before yeah. North Dakota gets it. A better effort here in the second half of North Dakota. They haven't given up an offensive rebound up to this point to GU. But if you're North Dakota, you've got to walk that fine line between wanting to use the clock and still staying aggressive. Here's Rui on the break, lays it in with a finger roll. Showtime is here, and it's a five-point ball game. Good finish by Rui that time. Perkins gave it up a little too early. North Dakota player there was able to make a play on it, but Rui with a nice catch and finish. And some great news as Killian Tilly is ready to re-enter the ball game as his strip goes out of bounds, and we're seeing North Dakota basketball. As Gonzaga is trying to extend his 7-0 run. And here comes Tilly back in. Boy, that, everybody just take a sigh of relief. Here's a look. Who did it touch last? Uh, there's no question. <laughs> it's pretty the easy. Five. First few as well as the 6,000 people in the McCarthy Athletic Center didn't like that call. Seals from the short strides. He was defended by Silas. Stewart off balance shot. Another miss. North Dakota has not scored in its last three and a half minutes. Trying to make it a one possession game. Tilly fouled and going to the line. Dale Jones picking up his second. Only the second trip to the free throw line tonight for Gonzaga. First one was by Jonathan Williams that time. Rui enters it to Tilly, cuts out, gives Tilly plenty of space and time to go to work. Tilly makes the first 84% from the line this season. And now Stewart subs out. Billy Brown comes back in, the sophomore. Tilly knocks them both down. It's a one possession game, down by three. Gonzaga now picking up one, two, two, four, four, trap. And Nelson the steal. Gonzaga yet another stop here. Here's Norvell who's blocked and fouled. That was a heck of a play by Crandall there. What a drive, but I, I looked clean up top at least. I'd love to take another look. Yeah, what a play. Body connected. Well, let's take a look. Good drive. Can't see it with that camera angle, but that's obviously clean up top. And Norvell puts seals in the spin cycle. That would be a clean block. Crandall just met him up top and said, I don't think so. A little bit of home cooking, I guess, yeah, there for the Zags. A touch. Maybe a bit of a makeup call and out of bounds. Well, Norvell riding quite the hot streak. First Zag freshman with 20 points or more in three straight games since a guy by the name of Elias Harris in 2010. And folks, it's a one-point game. Crowd getting on its feet here inside the McCarthy Athletic Center. Here's that pressure once again. Crandall gets through it. A little no-look pass to get it into the corner. Silas closed out quick. Three-point attempt off the mark. Pressure's getting, pressure's getting in North Dakota now. 1-2-2, two, two, doing what you want to. Speed up the offense. The Bulldogs have the lead. They're up by one on the Rui make. 46-45. Just over 12 minutes to play, and we've got a timeout. Sometimes it takes the older folks a little while to get warmed up and woken up. It throws it over the top and really doesn't release the seal right. until it's time to go catch and that's and the key. They always tell you let the ball get to right above your head and then release that contact. Good technique there from Rui.
Walter, the Washington native, able to get the inbound after a little bit of help. He was scrambling desperately to find somebody. Inside of 12 minutes, North Dakota trying to end this drought, and it will continue as Rui gets a steal. Here's Perkins breaking down seals, goes right after it misses. And Avance is tied up. But Perkins is called for the reach. Well, you can't compound your mistake. Push it in transition and miss the layup, which, as well as Josh has played throughout the season, he continues to struggle finishing in the paint and at the rim. You can't compound that mistake by then coming up with a foul. Two wrongs, not making a right for Gonzaga, which is still riding the strength of a 13-0 run. Crandall in trouble. Got rid of it. Here's Seals. Kick out from three. The wing shot no good. Out of bounds in Gonzaga basketball. You know, and you see what this press has done. Not only is it turned over North Dakota a couple times, but more importantly, it's speeding them up. Yep. Even once they break the press, they're sped up in their half court, taking shots much earlier in the clock than they were the first 25 minutes, and taking lower percentage, lower quality shots on top of that. Hawks have now missed on their last five shots. Hachimura, no good. The follow also no good. Tilly cannot get the put back. And yeah, North Dakota has it once again. Well, the fighting Hawks certainly not going away anytime soon. And that ends that drought for Seals, Cortez Seals. <laughs> it's got to be either Crandall on the pick and roll or Seals on a, you know, a, you know, an extended post catch. Right there, that's a nice job from North Dakota of searching out one of those matchups. Seals has been tremendous tonight. But it all started because Gonzaga didn't score, so they couldn't get into that three-quarter court trap. Crandall picks up the foul. And that's now number two on him. First off, good patience. Norvell does a decent job, makes him shoot over a body, over a hand, but Seals tonight has just been too much. Now 9 of 11 for 18 points. Norvell pulls the trigger on a three, no good. That North Dakota bucket, by the way, ending a drought of five minutes and 31 seconds. That's some of the growing pains you're going to go through with freshman wings, Kispert and Norvell that time. Maybe not a great shot, but making up for it on the defensive end with that deflection. Here's Perkins from the corner. Tilly trying to keep it alive, but Seals comes up with it behind the back at midcourt. Norvell was in his pocket and then defends Crandall and picks up the foul. Tell you what, Norvell, we've seen a little jump in his defensive game here in the second half. Well, I, I think he's grown on that end of the floor tremendously since where he, from where he was to start the year, quite frankly, from where he was when he got to Gonzaga. You know, still not a guy you can look at and, and think he's a stopper, but you know, when you look at what he does within the group, understanding the team concepts, he's there, and then he also competes when he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, so he's done a nice job on that on the floor. Jones and Williams back in, Norvell and Hachimura head to the bench. You know, and you ask anybody on the Gonzaga staff, nobody, no coach was at all surprised with Norvell jumping into that role as a shooter, as a scorer. Now they just want the defense to close the gap and, and follow suit. Well, the second Zach Norvell stepped on campus, he was a great scorer at the college level. He's just got a knack for putting the ball in the hole. Here's Melson, the floater in the lane. No good. Williams cannot get the rebound out of bounds, but it's Gonzaga basketball. Last touch by Crandall and the Fighting Hawks. Of course, just an acclaimed high school player is Norvell, playing out of Simeon High School in the Chicago area. And Perkins had some separation thanks to J3 on the screen there. Could not capitalize. Over 50% on his three-point shots on the season. High glass, no good. Williams the rebound. And now a nice move by Perkins. No good. Loose ball. And Jones comes up with it. A lot of contact on both ends. First Stewart, then there Perkins. No whistle from the official. Gonzaga has missed its last eight from the floor. Down by three, nine minutes and change the play. Circus shot goes, the oh, shot of the oh, night. Oh, boy. Gino Crandall up oh, and boy. under, threw it around. 
Crandall with a heck of a finish. Trying to connect with Williams, who was locked up by Avance, who picks up. I just want to see another look at his finish. <laughs> it's Tilly on skates, and Tilly's a good defender, and that he is an impossible finish. Sam Adams, you were excited about that ice ribbon downtown. <laughs> Tilly, and Tilly made an early entrance to that. He was put on skates, wasn't he? We got a foul away from the ball here. Looks to be on seals. Trying to hold off Jeremy Jones on the cut. And they're in the bonus. This will be a one and one situation. That's a positive sign for Gonzaga, though, to be in the bonus. About nine minutes left in the game. Didn't take a single free throw in that first half to go along with 11 turnovers. Not a great combination. Forget, forget about it. Gonzaga's history. That's just unique anyway. Yes. And I get a free throw attempt in you know, 20 minutes is almost unheard of. Puts Jones at the line, who is now looking at his 10th attempt on the season. Now 6 of 10 after making those two. Three-point ball game. Crandall defended by Silas. Now Stewart kicking back out, and he's called for the charge. It's a little too much. If you break the press, if you don't have something easy, pull it out and get into your set, get into your offense. I mean, here, Crandall, nice probe. Stewart's got a good look and just tries to force it a bit. Now Stewart, a 26% shooter from three-point land. The team on the season, 26%. Maybe a little gun shy, but... When you have an open look, my goodness, you've got to take advantage. Oh, and now a little muscle too much on Jonathan Williams. Yeah, forgive me, Sam. I just got a great angle of that. It looks like flagrant, flagrant one is the call. Puts Avance on the line. Remember, they'll have the ball after this as well. So, boys, fl flagrant one. Obviously, contact above the head. That's two free throws. Williams gets to stay in the game. So Avance makes the second free throw. There's Jonathan Williams still on the floor, as Richard says, and does remain in the game. Well, that was the right call by the officials. Yeah. Just took him a little longer than yeah, you would like. two is <laughs> going to be you know, the, the, the distinction, at least the way that I understand it, is, has a lot, a, a lot to do with intent. And right there, clearly, an inadvertent elbow uh, to the head. Stewart facing the trap gets out of it to Crandall. Crandall getting the trap. We go back and forth, and jumping around is Perkins. Perkins lays it up and into the foul. Boy, Josh just jumped that pass. And look at the finish. Boy, just a, a lazy pass from Stewart. And just a big time finish. He has struggled tonight, quite frankly. Josh has stretches where he struggles to finish at the rim. And right there, he. Uh, that's about as tough a finish as he's had all year at the rim. And that puts now Crandall in foul trouble with three. Perkins just under 80% on free throws on the season. And this makes it still a two-point ball game. I think all of us, when we started talking about the upsets that happened today in college basketball, the top 25s losing to unranked teams, we kind of mentioned it in the same breath in this game. We never thought in a million years that we'd be in that territory eight minutes to go. Crandall, another get out of here, man. nifty, creative finish. He's now starting to get comfortable and show some of his explosiveness. And he is a under-the-radar NBA prospect. Tilly had a good look. Now dribbling in, loses the ball. They have numbers. Four on one. High pass to Stewart. Somehow kept it in bounds. And then here's Seals, who backs off. And a good play here. Back it up. Get into what you want. You got another mismatch here with a little guarded by a big in Williams. Gonzaga has missed seven of its last eight. Desperately needing a stop here. Five on the shot clock. The kick out. Jones wide open three at the buzzer. Beats the shot clock to lead back to seven. If you're going to knock off a top 25 team on the road, you've got to have multiple guys step up and make plays. 
North Dakota has had that tonight with Seals, Jones, and Crandall. No answer on the other end. But now it's Perkins up top. The three. Back and forth we go from beyond the arc. Back to a four-point ball game. A tough break there for North Dakota. Seals is trying to tip it out against the larger man in Williams, and it goes right to Perkins. We'll take the timeout. Gonzaga climbs within four. 57-53. Here's the only Zag so far with 10 or more. Perkins with a team high 12. Stewart is at the line shooting two in the double bonus. Stewart shooting at a 72% clip on the season. One of four. North Dakota players in double figures tonight now with 12. Very balanced between Seals, 18, Jones with 14, Stewart and Crandall, that backcourt with 12 apiece. Tilly left wide open, nobody picks him up. Will not get the bounce. Norvell can't get the rebound. You know, just to give a little perspective, you know, this is a Gonzaga team that beat Creighton here by 17 and a North Dakota team that lost by 43. <laughs> That's the other night, it's amazing in college basketball what you know, a different night can mean. I mean, right now, you would not be able to tell that North Dakota struggled against Creighton given how they, well they play tonight. Yeah, I'd agree with you there, Richard. It has certainly been a different kind of night. Two on the shot clock, Randall for three. Got it. You know, he hasn't really been hunting out his offense, or rather he wasn't. Last four or five minutes, and Dan, you, you talk about this all the time. Time and score as a point guard, you've got to understand when you need to stop looking to create for your teammates and start looking for yours. He's really done a nice job of that. But well, you got a bounce by Crandall. Got to credit Seals there, too. He had a wide open look from three. But he knows who Not he is. a good shooter. Passes yes. up an open shot. That's amazing. I, I mean, it's knowing your role and knowing your value to your team. And how many guys struggle with that? Yeah. Gonzaga trying to end a 10-3 run. This is a jumper inside the circle from Hachimura. They get it back on the offensive rebound. Norvell probing the defense. A little room to operate. And squeezes through the window for two. Great footwork. Avance with nice work on the low block, trying to make it tough on Norvell. But you see the footwork. Tough finish. Much needed bucket here for GU down seven with five to go. Norvell just two of eight from the floor. Much needed points there. Five minutes of play. North Dakota leading here on the road by seven. Five on the shot clock. Seals defended by Norvell. Contested shot goes. It's, it's, it's just one four low, one four wide. Going one-on-one. -on -one. They find the matchup they like, and then they go to work. Achimura no good on the three. Crandall the rebound. Oh, right now you're seeing a tale of two teams one that knows what they want to do on offense in North Dakota in the last few possessions Gonzaga's kind of been scrambled I don't think a three from Rui at this point in time is what they want yeah, and, and if you're GU do you think about going to that two three zone you had some success with it in the first half Crandall driving on Hachimura in and out no good loose ball Avance fighting for the ball missing Hachimura had it and then there's a foul. Oh, and what, a, what effort from Avance. And you'd love for him just to kick it out. Give yourself another possession. And here you see right here, Seals. Just no help. Nobody can help. You've got shooters spaced out. And he's done that time and time again tonight. Get to that left hand. And he's able to finish over the body. Just a tremendous performance for Seals tonight. Now 20 points, 10 of 12. All those attempts inside the arc. Well, you always have to play to your philosophy and your, your basics defensively but North Dakota on that possession in particular really spaced the floor yeah. and Gonzaga stayed connected to shooters which is kind of odd because North Dakota's shooting at only 26 percent on the year from three coming in two noteworthy items from that free throw first the miss by Hachimura ending a streak of 17 consecutive makes after he missed his second free throw of the season also of note four fouls now on Crandall yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go the, the distance here. The only way he's coming off the floor, Sam, is if he fouls out. But uh, you hope, as a junior who's played in some big games, he's gonna be able to to pick and choose his spots. It obviously changes the dynamic for North Dakota if he's not out there on the floor. They get it into Cortez Seals. Just over four to play. 
Gonzaga down by eight. Silas up in and very close to Crandall defensively right there. Perkins following suit on his defensive stance. Back out, Stewart. A miss on the three, and Tilly and Jones got tied up on the rebound. Oh, that three attempt there by Jones may come back to haunt them. That was a little quick. That's just a bad shot. Silas for three, no good. Norvell flying in on the offensive board. 15 offensive oh, rebounds. Oh, 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 big three by Norvell with three and a half to play. It's down to a five point ball game. We're in my garage, but happy birthday to her. I hope I'm still going to games when I'm 100. This game has taken some years off people's lives. I think Tommy, when she came in here, was 30. <laughs> 64 59, 320 to play. Gonzaga cranking up the D. Perkins and Nelson. Three point game with three minutes and 13 seconds to play. Well, interesting. Crandall had to let Silas Nelson go there because he had four fouls. Gonzaga's pressure created another turnover. Perkins keeps it alive. Big sigh of relief here from Gonzaga. Perkins knocks it down and a work time with 2.50 to play. That three by Perkins got this crowd up out of their seats, as did it you, Sam. Nine nothing run for the Bulldogs. the shot clock this is where all your preseason practices and working on execution comes into play does North Dakota have confidence in their sideline out of bounds plays to get into something good on the flip side Gonzaga guys stepping up making big plays when big plays are needed Gonzaga nine points in this last minute 17 seconds Randall defended by Melson what a stop two on the shot clock corner three no good and Williams a rebound Tide turning here inside the kennel. Norvell back out to J3. We're inside of two minutes in a tie ball game. J3. Their first lead since being up 46 to 45. And Williams having incredible patience that time. A couple minutes ago, got called for a flagrant one. That time, finish with the patience. It has to be said, the minutes. And some of their players stepping up, making big plays, whether it's Jeremy Jones, as Richard just mentioned, being really active at the top of the zone as well as in passing lanes. Or guys finishing at the rim, or Perkins knocking down a big three, or Norvell getting an offensive rebound and a putback three. We see they got to call a timeout here, but if, we, if, if you went back, you could see the spacing is so far on these passes. You've got to shorten up those passes if you're North Dakota. But they've cranked up the defense, and again, as you mentioned, this look has thrown North Dakota now into fits. Eleven nothing run for GU. Crandall drawing a lot of attention behind the back. Avance is blocked by Silas. Norvell takes a step in, rattles it home. Some breathing room, one by four with 108 to play. Crandall on the other end, an offensive foul. No, oh, excuse me. Silas Nelson got the ball there, Sam, came up under Crandall on the drive, but what a swing there. You got the behind-the-back pass from Crandall. That's a great set from North Dakota. Avon's just not able to finish a lot of contact. No will still, and you come down the other way. Zach Novell with the tough finishing transition. Crandall makes the first. And see now Tilly back in. 
Well, let's see here if North if Crano knocks down the street throw, what kind of wrinkle North Dakota tries to throw at Gonzaga defensively. Got no IFD, just has up two big makes there. Back to a two-point game just now a minute to play. Looking to hear a pin drop here inside the kennel. There's a little floater in the lane. No good by Norval. Loose ball extended by Perkins. It's the second time we've seen Perkins come up with the long rebound. And here for North Dakota, you don't have to foul. Just be solid. If you get the stop, you might be able to get something in transition. But you have to rebound. Yes. They didn't on that last shot attempt. 20 seconds to play. Five on the shot clock. Here's Perkins dribbled it off his knee. Looking, looking. Here's Tilly to give. And a foul. Boy, did they get bailed out there. With one on the shot clock, they took every second off the clock, and then, and then they go to the line. Well, look, you, you found the right guy if you're North Dakota. You've got Williams at the line who struggled to start the year at 54%. And Tilly, there, you've got the nice little floater. It's a tough pass, a uh, tight window, but Williams able to get the shot up and knock down the free throw. As if there was any doubt. Now it's going to be interesting to see if. Coach Few plays the foul game on his end, defensively being up three, but they're going to talk over there. Dakota team that's going to be a handful in the big sky. Williams misses the second after that timeout. If there's Gonzaga foul here, they play it straight up. Looks like they're going to play straight up here with seven seconds. Crandall gets Perkins up in the air. Three on the clock, this to force over time. Got it with 1.9. Perkins tied up. And we're going overtime. Before the horn, it would have been over six, but extended play here as we get an extra five minutes for overtime. Gonzaga wins the opening tip here in overtime. It's the same starting five we saw at the beginning of the contest. Nelson throws it up the lot in the finish by J3. Nelson. Hobbling back defensively a little funny. Don't know if it is his ankle or his knee, but pretty quickly Started jumping around a little bit and trying to walk it off Looks like he'll do just that yeah, he's telling the bench is fine but Nice little two-man game Threw it over the top and credit Williams with the tough catch and finish. Well, he wants to stop Crandall here, doesn't he? Good defense there by the Bulldogs. Williams came in on the help. Seals, no go on that basket. Yeah, Seals felt that pressure, rushed that shot just enough. He's been knocking the, down those looks all night. Norvell pulling the trigger on the three. <laughs> I tell you what, for a freshman, he simply has no conscience. He doesn't care if he misses his first couple. He's going to be who he is, and that's a straight score. I think precocious might be an understatement. Aggressive. So he pulled the trigger on that three. As he pulled it, you're thinking, what are you doing? And then by the time it goes through the cylinder, you go, oh, yeah, that's all right. Five-point lead for Gonzaga. And now a steal by Perkins. Ahead to Norvell. Norvell will finish with a finger roll. Seven point TU lead. Been interesting here to start the second half. No press from Gonzaga as North Dakota is going to take a quick 20. Well, they're getting bonus pass by nine with 4.49 to play. Gonzaga was on the ropes. They came out with a lot of jabs and then the Haymaker 13 nothing run. And here we are in overtime. And now a steal by Williams. Williams with the Euro step. No good. Out of bounds, that'll go to Gonzaga. <laughs> Jonathan Williams trying to create contact to get Crandall his fifth foul of the game, but lost his balance on the Euro step. Couldn't quite finish. Not quite the look that he wanted. Here we go, right here. Looks 
Silas going down now for Gonzaga with just over three minutes to play. Willie, uh, excuse me, Perkins being descended, uh, defended by Crandall. Seven on the shot clock. Perkins has some room and he uses the right hand for the finish. Good court awareness there by Josh Perkins. Kick out, Jones up top three, in and out, no good. Not a bad look if you're North Dakota. Well, you do a nice job defending Gonzaga deep into the clock, and then Perkins just makes a nice play on that drill penetration with the tough finish off the glass. Some questions, perhaps. North Dakota running out of steam. They haven't gone to the bench much. There's six men, so to speak. Ten minutes from Walters. That's been it. Well, it's that attrition. You're trying to block out, defend a bigger team. Gonzaga has more depth. Gonzaga for a large stretch there in the second half was pressing North Dakota. So I think it's a fair point to make, Sam, that is North Dakota here in this overtime period running out a little bit of a gas, a little bit of energy. GU shooting 73% on the season from the charity strike. And Tilly. One point away from joining that double-digit club with Williams, Perkins, and Orbell, and he does just that. Final two minutes here in overtime. Oh, my goodness. Just when you're ready to count them out, Crandall comes up with a big three. That ends a 25-5 run. Ball needs to be in his hands on every possession. Perkins dribbling it out. 10 on the shot clock. 140 to play in overtime. Tilly gets it into the corner. Silas tries to get it back to him. J3 with one on the shot clock. That'll be a shot clock violation. Did not hit the rim. So North Dakota just hanging and hanging around. Crandall still playing with those four fouls. I don't think this is the way Mark Hugh was imagining this day would end up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a lot of times coming off of finals, yep. guys have been focused in on finishing the semester strong as opposed to being in the gym with their normal routines. And obviously it seemed to have thrown guys off for a good portion of this game. There was one member of the Fighting Hawks team last night after their late night workout uh, was wrapping up practice, wanted to know what time it was. And by the time he figured out the time difference, he had about an hour to write a paper for his final exam to get back to Fargo. <laughs> Seals with the left hand. Nice and quick attack. Get a quick bucket early in your clock. Just two possessions here for North Dakota. You just got to get the stop at your point in the second half, Dan. They've got to come up with the rebound if they force the miss. One minute, here we go. Perkins. What a move and a finish from Josh Perkins. Two big finishes down the stretch for Josh Perkins. Three from Stewart. Back to a single digit game now. I should say a five point ball game. 40 seconds. And there's the foul. So we'll have two free throws here, Silas. Nelson, a 90% free throw shooter. He was 70% from the line as a sophomore. And now it's time to announce tonight's player of the game. Presented by A to Z Rental. And done a lot tonight, huh? Josh Perkins with a player for the dramatic. He's come up with some clutch shots down the stretch. 
Folks, no job is too big or too small. With eight convenient locations, we rent everything. Let A to Z rental be your most valuable player, Josh Perkins. Final 30 seconds in a seven-point contest here in overtime. And we've got a foul. Great whistle, but it looked like there was some contact on the way up. Well, Coach Few wasn't happy after the last defensive possession. I was watching him interact with Perkins and Williams and say, why give an open look from three? And this time, he's not happy about fouling a jump shooter 15 feet from the bucket. Oh, that's the right call. It is. Perkins line, 19 points, 7 assists, 5 steals, and 4 rebounds. Jones heads to the bench. Seals just 60% from the line this season. A big hit there. We'll get Trey Buchanan, the freshman from East Moline, Illinois, on the floor. Buchanan, just a 25% three-point shooter on the season. They bring him in for the fouls, for the defense. Zagnor Bell, crafty on that possession. Understanding to keep the ball in the best free throw shooter's hands. You be the guy that gets fouled and go to the free throw line. Norvell going into this one in his last four games, 55% from the floor, 13 of 15 from the line, 12 threes. The list goes on and on. First Zag to record 20 points in his first two starts in collegiate basketball since Josh Heifel. He's got a chance to possibly hit the 20 mark again tonight. He's got 18, makes this one, goes 19. You never know if North Dakota extends out the free throw game in any way. And it didn't look that way, Dan, in the first half. No, but that's you got to love his response. He struggled early against the University of Washington the other night, and stuck with it, and made some big plays in the second half. He did the exact same here tonight. And he did the same thing against Creighton. Hey, yeah, hey, the best players are all about the next play. They're not dwelling yeah. on what just happened. He's... The definition of that he could care less that he's you know one of six in the first half he's going to continue to be aggressive in a second Randall with a quick trigger on the three knocks it down but if you're going to switch switch you can't give their best shooter or best yeah, player an open look from three it's a breakdown defensively and you've got silas and josh talking it through that's your senior backcourt it's the same action that they've used over the last, over overtime in the last few minutes of regulation, pistol action, you throw it ahead, you go back and try to get a little flip back pass. That time was slightly different angle, but you got to be connected and know, are you switching? Are you staying at home? Nelson makes the first. Silas had come into this contest making a three in a personal best 13 straight games. He's over two from three-point range tonight, so that streak in jeopardy, but uh, he couldn't care less with these free throws, helping putting the finishing touches, perhaps, on this one. Stewart gets it to Crandall. Well defended this time. And the glove was all over him there. An air ball by the leading scorer for North Dakota. On the season, Crandall. And he's at 26 points to lead all scorers tonight. And he's been playing for much of this game with four personal fouls. It'll be Perkins' turn now around the carousel of the free throw line. Well, if you're Mark Few and his staff, you're not pleased uh, with a lot of tonight, but you have to be pleased with the response there with less than five minutes in the second half and what, down by nine, Sam, or something to that effect? Just a big time response. You find a way to get the tough win at home, but if you're North Dakota, you've got to feel pretty good about what you have as you head into Big Sky next week. Uh, this is a team that was picked to finish fifth in the league after winning it last year. I think that number might be a little low. That was the first miss in overtime for Gonzaga at the line. Perkins. Gonzaga now is a team nine for ten here in these extra five minutes. Randall with an easy flush with 6.6. Well, so that happened. 
what a finish we saw tonight from Gonzaga. You expect a test like.